Hello everyone, thanks for checking out my video. My desktop monitor broke down when I was working on this video, so I had to use my TV to work on it, which was quite challenging. Otherwise, this video will only be out on Tuesday, so do give me a like in return if possible. Anyway, S&P 500 and Nasdaq continued their rally and clinched their highest closing level since early 2022. The S&P 500 is now up a whopping 20% this year. The current bull market looks unstoppable. The latest rally came after a strong November job report and a consumer survey data signaling a robust US economy and cooling inflation. All this gave investors hope that we are about to have a soft landing scenario. So, can the Federal Reserve pull off a soft landing or has recession been postponed to 2024? Let's discuss them in this video. Also, I have lots of things to share for my options trade. Interested viewers, please stay throughout the video, alright? All the major indexes closed out the week with gains after a robust job report was released. Basically, November's non-farm payrolls report came in with an unexpected decline in the unemployment rate, falling from 3.9% to 3.7%. The expectation was that it will remain the same. Then, we have the US economy adding slightly more jobs with 199,000 openings, slightly more than the estimate of 190,000, and way above than October's 150,000. Okay, in case you go wondering, I thought the Fed and investors had always complained that the labour market is too resilient and the economy has been too hot, which make it difficult for inflation to cool. Well, all I can say is there's always two sides to a story. So on the other hand, this strong report could also support the notion or thesis that the Fed could pull off a soft landing for the US economy. In short, bring down inflation without causing too much negative impact to the economy and labour market. To put things in layman terms, the Fed and investors don't want the job market to be too hot and wages to be too high, which could fuel inflation. But at the same time, they also don't want the unemployment rate to tick up by too much, with so many people losing jobs and causing US to go into recession. Basically, they want a sweet spot, a balance, an equilibrium, or whatever you wish to call it. In the week ahead, we have the last FOMC meeting of the year, on 12 and 13 December. The general sensing and expectation of the market is that the Fed will hold existing interest rates, in other words, another pause in the rate hike campaign. Other than this, the market will also want to hear Powell's final FOMC speech of 2023 as they look for guidance and insights in the months and year ahead, especially the rate cards. So after the speech, the market will probably continue to predict and guess when is the first rate card, and the market will likely move according to that new anticipation. Meanwhile, on 12 December, we have CPI inflation data coming out, which could give both Fed and the investors some indication on whether the Fed's policy is still making progress, given that inflation has already dropped so much from the initial 9% to around 3%. Some are saying that inflation may get very sticky from this point, because bringing down inflation from 9% to 3% is different from 3% to 2%. Is it true? We shall see. Alright, moving over to the technical analysis segment. Let's have a look at SPY's chart. If you could recall, in my last video, I shared this middle channel line and that SPY is at a pivotal area of around 458. So as of last Friday, SPY closed above 458 at around 460. Come Monday, we need SPY to not create an intraday low that is lower than last Friday's low. In short, SPY must not go below 457.2. On top of this, it has to close above last Friday's close, which is 460.2. When these two happens, then SPY is very bullish because it would have created higher lows for 4 consecutive days. And this is also when I think there is a decent chance to break the 52-week high of 460.7, which was created recently and charge towards the all-time high of 467. In fact, I think there is even a chance to head towards the top end of the green uptrend channel at around 469 to 470. But just a caveat, it may not happen this week. So just take note of these key levels and follow my videos for more updates. 
In terms of the downside, watch for 453. It is a mini support level that has been supporting SPY for the last 12 trading days. If this area breaks, we could likely head towards the gap between 441 to 446. And this gap is one potential bounce area. In fact, this whole area of about 439 to 446 is one big support zone. I know the range is huge, but there are multiple support levels within this zone. Basically, other than the gap, we have the bottom of the uptrend channel and also the 61.8 Fibonacci level. And since it is a strong support zone, this means that if this area breaks, bears could be back to party. The full party will be on if the bears can further take out the 50 moving average at around 437. Let's now check out Apple. Remember in my previous video, I talked about a bull flag potentially forming on Apple's chart. And so it seems like it has played out as Apple has chosen its direction, which is towards the upside. In short, Apple is bullish now. I will not fight this bullish trend until I see bearish signs. More on that later. In terms of the bullish thesis, we do have a chance to test the all-time high of 197.7 if Powell and CPI data don't give us negative surprise this week. Just to also highlight, the MACD just had a bullish cross. So yup, it seems like things are lining up for Apple to hit that all-time high soon. Okay, but I have to caveat something. The possibility of continuation of bullish trend can be high. I mean, it can be 70%, 80% for that matter. But there is no such thing as 100%. So let's discuss on the potential 20% to 30% downside possibility. Okay, so for Apple to reverse the bullish trend, it has to close below 189. At that level, bears are still not in control yet. Watch that 61.8 Fibonacci level at 185. That will be the best target if the market wants to flush down. This is the level we want the bulls to defend. Because if 185 level breaks, then I think we could just slide down to low 180s, where the next support level is. This low 180s is a very strong support level formed by the 50 moving average, 100 moving average, and a Fibonacci level, making it a triple support level. I think it will be difficult for bears to take out this level. But if they do, then I would say bears are back to party. Alright, let's now have a look at Tesla's chart. Ever since Tesla recovered from the low of 194 with two gap pumps, it has been trading sideways in a very tight range for the last 18 trading days, between about 231 and 240 range. This is also where the 50 moving average sits, at around 234. It seems like the bulls and the bears are battling around this area without a clear winner. With this, it makes it easy to analyze the stock. To have a clear upside, Tesla needs to break out of this consolidation range. For confirmation, I think we can use that purple downtrend line as a guide. If Tesla can go above this line for a few days, then the bullish trend is confirmed. From there, we have a high chance to fly towards the recent high of 268. But just to highlight, Tesla has been rejected by this purple downtrend line on 4 occasions. So I think it's worth paying attention when Tesla gets near to this area. Before I move on, it's appreciation time. I would like to thank the following 3 viewers for your super thanks support. I really appreciate it. Again, like I always say, by purchasing a super thanks or a cup of coffee as a form of support, it's not gonna make me rich and not gonna make you poor. But it is really a nice gesture that I would greatly appreciate. By the way, just to show the viewers, currently what is reflected on my YouTube account is $2.99 US dollars. And interestingly, the minimum amount for me to cash out from YouTube is 150 Singapore dollars. So that's a long, long way to go for me to receive my first paycheck from YouTube. Okay, I know by selling one option contract will earn me that amount, but let's try something here. If, if, let's say, you found my content useful or have learned something from my videos over the last two years, do consider buying me a super thanks and let's see when I can cash out. And yes, you heard it correctly. It has been almost two years since I first started this channel back in December 2021. And I have only $2.99 in my YouTube account. That's like $1.50 a year. If I'm not doing this because I like to share what I know, I would have quit. 
Anyway, I know there are viewers who contributed via my coffee page previously, which I did not forget, and I am very appreciative of that as well. Okay, so shall we try this challenge? Let's see when I can cash out the money from YouTube. The super thanks button is just right below this video. But if you would like to buy me a coffee instead, the link can be found in the description box and comment section below. Okay, in terms of the downside for Tesla, just like the upside, it has to break out of the consolidation range. And I noticed that the 231 level seems like a decent short term support. I mean, as you can see, this level has been tested about 7 to 8 times, and Tesla always bounced from here. Therefore, in my view, this will be one key level to watch this and next week. If Tesla breaks below this level, there is a high chance to fill that gap between 225 to 226. Okay, since Tesla is very volatile, let's give and take a little bit. I will stretch the support area to the 38.2 Fibonacci level at 222. In short, watch for a potential bounce from 222 to 226. Interestingly, this is where the 200 moving average sits as well, at 225, effectively making it a triple support area. If I have bullish trades on Tesla, I wouldn't want this triple support level to break. Because if it does, then Tesla is weak. The last line of defense lies at 216, which is the blue 61.8 Fibonacci level. Below this level, we are looking at low 200 range already. Moving over to Google's chart, I guess before I even talk about it, you would have anticipated that I am gonna bring up this consolidation zone again. Yes, you're right, but before you skip this section, just wanna say, there is still some meaningful analysis behind this consolidation area, okay? Anyway, for the benefit of newer viewers, just so you know, I have been sharing for weeks or even months that Google has been trading sideways in this kind of predictable range between 127-128 to around 139-140 since July, except for about 5 days in late October. And because of this very predicted move, I have milked a lot of premiums from it through options trading. More on that later. Alright, here's the latest example of how Google is moving in this predictable range. As you can see, it hit the top end of the consolidation area of 139 on 22nd November. Then, it fell to the bottom of the zone at 127.9 on 4th December. And then, it gapped up on the announcement of Gemini, hit 138.5, and retraced the very next day. So, will Google start moving towards 127-128 area again? I would say, maybe, a decent chance, but nothing is guaranteed, so don't follow my words blindly. Instead, watch the actual movement and use technical analysis to interpret the possibility. First of all, watch that 50 moving average closely, which sits at around 133.5. If this breaks, we have a high chance to fill that gap up we had on Gemini Day, which ranges from 131 to 134. However, do note that the bottom of the gap is not near to the bottom of the consolidation zone of 127-128. What I'm trying to say is, there is still a chance for Google to fill the gap and bounce from there without even hitting the bottom of the consolidation zone. But, if it goes below the gap, then of course 127, 128 would be the next potential area for bounce. On the upside, once again 139 to 140 poses a big resistance since July this year. Therefore, for Google to be caught bullish, it has to get above 140 for a few days. Given the current level it is at, and MACD is potentially on its way for a bullish cross, the most ideal scenario for the boost would be Google to have a retracement to fill that gap, bounce from the gap, and go above 140. That will put MACD in the bullish zone as well, and we can finally break above 140. Basically, to summarize, watch for bounce areas, then watch for the MACD, and watch for 140. If all these stars or conditions align, then we can easily stay above 140's range for a while. Okay, moving over to the options trading section, which I have lots of things to update for this video, mainly made up by trades on Tesla and Google. First up, for long-term followers of my channel, you will know that I am stuck in this endless loop for this Google's covered call. 
To summarize, I previously got a site with 100 shares of Google at $100 per share. Then I started to sell cover calls on these shares. But my call strike prices have been breached time and time again. As such, I have two options. One is to let the shares get caught away, say at $120 per share, and I get to lock in the profit of $2,000. Or I can just keep rolling it up and out. Okay, here are my thoughts. Given the bull market that we are in, I decided to choose the latter option because I didn't want to lose out on the upside. Therefore, last week on 5th December Tuesday, I wrote this $120 strike price cover call to $122 strike price with expiration date on 29th December. Overall, if the contract expires worthless on 29th December, this trade is still profitable as you can see from the calculations. But frankly speaking, the chance of Google falling below 122 by 29 December is not high. So you may wonder why did I not roll it further out till next year and with a higher strike price. Okay, I gotta be honest here, I am trying to see if I can wrap up this trade by this year end to conclude all my option trades for 2023. And with a shorter expiration date, I naturally cannot choose a higher strike price because that will give me lesser premium. Okay, if you don't know what I am talking about, do check out the 3 videos that I have done on the basics of options trading. Okay, anyway, since the odds of Google falling below 122 by 29 December is low, I thought why not just milk a bit more premium from the market makers. As such, on the same day, 5th December, I sold a new cash secure put on Google with expiration date on 29 December as well. The premium isn't that great as it is only 55 bucks. But hey, it's still money, right? I mean, if Google does not fall below 122 by 29 December, I will gladly keep this 50-ish dollars and roll that earlier covered call. On the other hand, if Google falls below 122, the earlier covered call will finally expire worthless and I get to earn premium from that trade. And when this happens, I will think about whether I should accept assignment for Google at $122 per share. To be honest, $122 isn't a bad price to purchase Google in this bull market. Okay, still on Google. So, the very next day, 6 December, I saw that Google has bounced nicely off the bottom of the consolidation zone that I have covered in my technical analysis segment. And it did so for 3 consecutive days. That's bullish. And therefore, I decided to sell another cash secure put with a strike price of 125 expiring 12 January 2024. Not gonna show the premium as I do not want viewers to follow my trade blindly. It's quite dangerous to do so. Anyway, why 125 strike price? Let me share my rationale. Two main reasons. First of all, can you see this blue Fibonacci retracement level? Well, 127 is the all-important 61.8 support level. And to play safe, I chose a strike price below this strong support to give myself some buffer. Just to add on, 125 is also a support level based on the other yellow Fibonacci level. So yup, double support and that's reason number 1. The second reason is as simple as other than the recent huge drop in late October where Google closed below 125 for 4 days, I have not seen Google closing below this 125 level since that gap up in July this year. This shows that Google is holding up quite well above 125. And if you have watched the earlier technical analysis segment, you will know that July was the start of this whole consolidation movement between 127 to 139, 140 area. So yep, similar to the very first reason, I chose the strike price out of this consolidation area just to give myself some buffer. Currently, the trade is up about uh, 55%, quite decent. Moving over to Tesla's trades. Last Friday, 8 December, I had this cash secure put on Tesla that expired. Its strike price was 185. The contract was sold on 3rd November where Tesla just had a gap up and was on its way to recovery from the low of 194. Well, Tesla did go down a little to fill that gap before bouncing further up. But as you can see, it has not gone near my strike price of 185 at all. As a result, my contract expired worthless and I got to keep the full premium of $212. 
Alright, the last trade to update is this new Tesla cash secure put that I sold on 8 December with a strike price of 205 expiring 12 January. The rationale behind this trade is, as shared previously, I am of the view that Tesla will likely move between 200 to 240 range from now till year end. So if it does turn out to be like this, time decay will set in for my contract. The biggest threat for this trade is early January's announcement of delivery numbers by Tesla. That could potentially swing the stock wildly in one direction. So to manage my risk, I have selected a strike price with decent buffer. First of all, Tesla has a strong support at 231 as it has been floating above this level for almost the last one month. Next, even if this breaks, I have two more Fibonacci support levels below it at 222 and 211. Not just that, I also drew another blue Fibonacci level, which shows that the all-important 61.8 level is at 216, which should act as a decent support too. Actually, looking at these levels, I initially wanted to select 210 strike price to get a better premium. But don't forget, it's Tesla. It's super volatile and prone to huge movements. Therefore, I went with 205 instead, just to be safe. From this point, Tesla has to drop about 15% to bridge my strike price. Is that possible? Of course. Well, let's see how the trade pans out. Okay, overall, the stock market is trading in a tight range, but yet slowly inching up. We are getting closer and closer to new all-time high, something that I said could potentially happen by the end of this year or early January. But this is pure personal sensing given the current bullish market sentiment, so just take it with a pinch of salt. Even if it happens, I will not say it's a big correct call from me or that sort. Anyway, the current thesis or narrative that is driving the latest rally is soft landing and potential rate cuts in early half of 2024. As we get more data points, the market has this growing belief that the Fed is able to achieve their dream soft landing. In other words, bring down inflation without causing a widespread job losses and damage to the US economy. And because of a potential soft landing, the Fed could then also potentially announce their first rate cut in the first half of 2024. So yeah, basically these two are the narratives that are driving the stock market rally right now. And as long as this narrative remains, the bias for the stock market will be there. Investors will likely continue their latest risk on mode by investing in equities, instead of flocking to safe havens such as bonds or keeping cash by the sidelines. But here's a caveat, given the high interest rate environment, I really don't know how sustainable can the rally be. In my opinion, it is not quite possible for the rally to just go on and on when the interest rate is so high, because this level of interest rates will definitely hurt companies' profits if it drags on. Also, with the latest strong rally and super bullish sentiment in the market, I thought to just highlight something as a precautionary measure, and that is, the VIX, which measures the market fear and volatility, has dropped to its lowest since 2020. When this index gets unusually low, it means there is excessive bullishness in the market. To add on to this, according to CNN's Fear and Greed Index, the market is in the greed zone. Yes, of course, it can still move up to extreme greed zone, which means the market can still have room to go up. However, when the market continues to rise from here, and when VIX continues to go even lower than this point, and when the market is getting even more bullish and greedy and complacent, that's when I will be very careful, because the risk of a pullback will go higher. But, but, here's a but, a caveat on top of the caveat. The pullback doesn't have to happen immediately when VIX hits a new low point, or when the fear and greed index hits extreme greed. And also the pullback doesn't have to be something huge or long-lasting. The reason why I am sharing all this is just basically a reminder on not to get too complacent in this bull market, regardless of your strategy. If you are a short-term trader, take profits off the table if you have to. And for long-term investors, just enjoy this bullish ride up and pick up shares when there are dips. Okay, please help me grow my channel by tapping on the like and subscribe buttons. I will see you in the next one. Thank you.